you know, I'm, I'm only smirking, not not at that. I, I love your story, mm-hmm. love your family, but you had a moment on our Harvest Carnival where I saw a lot of your mom. And the reason I say that is because I, I can't remember what's going on. I think we were still doing setup. And I think somebody put on like Thriller or whatever. And when you came out to me, you're like, hey, what kind of music are we going to be playing tonight? And I was like, oh, man, it's cool. Like, I, I you know, I, you know me, I, I like a, I like a plethora of music. But all I can remember, all I can remember is when um, at your wedding, you know, your mom would come up to me and ask me, like, we're going to keep it all Christian, you know, like, and I'm like, I'm cool with it. You know me, I'll, I'll do whatever. And when, when you came up, I was like, he is his mother's son right here. He's no, like, that wasn't just me. That was Mike, too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we kept saying, hey, if we're going to say this is a Christian event, we got to be on the up and up. Right, this got to be a question of it. And, and you guys know me. I, you know I'm a. I, you, you, you guys know I got no dog in that hunt. You know, I, whatever. I, I, I'm I'm totally open to it all. But we're, I just, we're a lot more modest when it comes. Yes, to that. you guys are. But I just thought it was funny because when you walked away, I go, "Man, that see that apple didn't mm-hmm. fall far from that tree whatsoever." And it's respectable. What's going on, fam? This is Anthony from the Not Offended Podcast, the conservative Chicano right here. If y'all could do me a favor, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So if you could leave a comment, hit the like button, but most of all, if you could hit subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, welcome to the Not Offended Podcast. It's your boy, Anthony, conservative Chicano. What's going on, mi gente? Man, 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 man. Every time we talk about food, the pizza went crazy. The pizza went crazy. And Deshaun, I have to turn to you, of course, the bishop, and of course, the token. Um, People agreed with you on your Little Caesars comment. Not that it was trash. Who said it was trash? Well, one of you guys said it was trash. Mm, I'm pretty Caesar's sure you trash. said it was trash. Uh, I probably did, because I don't <laughs> eat pizza in general. But somebody had mentioned that if it comes out hot from the oven, it's the best pizza around. I think you said that too. I didn't say the best. I said it's, it's, it's good. Oh, okay, so we're not the best, but no, it, it's good. It's, it's good. good. Okay. Uh, people did take a little bit of offense to your Mountain Mike's comment. Yeah, and then uh, our manager group went to Mountain Mike's that, that next Tuesday. <laughs> or, or, or the next day. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> And they took a picture there. They they wanted you to know mm-hmm. that they were not at me and Ed. They were not they at, me at me and Ed's. I know, but I talked to some people today, and they they agreed with me that no, we would go to me and Ed's. Mountain, oh. Mike's, is garbage. <laughs> Mountain Mike's is a north, you know, type restaurant. Oh, yeah. oh, it's a north type restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you mean it's a little bit more expensive? No, 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 like a Merced, Modesto. Oh. No, no, not more expensive, more ghetto. More. <laughs> I love how when it comes to food, you don't ever go back. You just double down. You just, you just keep going with it. He double downs, doesn't he? Yeah, that was good. That yeah, was good. no, I, I, I want to th- thank everybody for chiming in on the comments. I appreciate all that. Um, I don't know what other type of controversy we can store, store up. I do have a question, though, since we're on the food controversies here, lady. Is it caramel or is it caramel? Caramel. What is it? I think I say caramel. Okay. Am I the only one that says caramel? Well, I don't say that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, we, we, were, we got into a debate this morning about it when we were talking about favorite candy bars. And I go- How's it spelled? I, I don't even know. how. But you asking the worst speller of all time. You asked me how to spell something. This, this is bad. Because you're, I mean, you're saying a whole other A that we're oh, not saying. Oh, am I? Okay, right I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I like, I was talking to somebody, they, they, we were talking about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And I said the only thing that that kind of rivals my taste buds, like with the peanut butter and chocolate, is I said caramel and chocolate. Like and they go what? I go caramel. They go what's that? You mean caramel? And I'm like caramel. I don't even know now. So anyway, that's how I got into it. So I was just I was just curious. I did try a new food today. Uh, um, abonigas. Hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Yeah, it was good. Uh, Spanish word of the day today. Abonigas. Yeah, 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 there you go. It was good. Hey, hey, that, you've never had it. I never had it. I didn't expect it to be any good. So. And I was like, no, I'm giving it a shot. Someone who cooks, you know, well, Vince cooks well. So I was like, no, I'll give it a Vince. shot. And it was good. Oh, it's super good. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you, Are you a fan of Amonigas? Yeah, I can do Amonigas. Okay, so here's what we'll do. If you're listening and you're out there. I'm going to do pozole over Okay, see, that's what I'm going to say. Is For it sure. menudo, pozole, or Amonigas? Menudo's garbage. Okay. <laughs> I can't do menudo. I can't do the okay. tribe. I can't do you know, the tribe. This is the first time. First time on the Not Fitted Podcast, we all agree on the same thing. I do not eat menudo either. I never have. That's for sure. It's like we broke what's yep. left over. 
<laughs> throw it in there. Yeah, throw it in but, there. But if I had my way, it's the Mexican jump jambalaya. It is. What? If I had my way, it'd be a bone that goes all day. That's 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 my favorite. Leave it in the comments what you like. So let's get let's get going. Of course, you know we talk about culture and its influence on the church. Shout out to my boy Donald. Uh, he's up in he's up in Eureka. The guy finds some of the most interesting things out there. I love it. Um, he's not a conspiracy theorist either. But, but yeah, but but he lives up in humble. But he lives so. up in humble, and we be coming up with some good ones. I'm gonna show you one here in just a second. But I want to get to the comments. I want to get to the comments because a lot of people chimed in on our on. Our, we do have an Instagram page, not offended podcast on the in- Instagram. So go find us. Uh, matter of fact, throw that in the link if they want to find us on Instagram for me, Nate. Please uh, come come like that on that. We do a lot of our clips over there. He found a clip of Robert Kennedy talking about his prayer and what he's been praying for when it comes to the health of the nation. We got a lot of blowback on the whole vaccine thing. Like, you know, um, somebody even bumped into me. Not all vaccines are bad. I never said all vaccines are bad. What I have said is when can we get the, the, the evidence? When can we get the data? When can we begin to analyze? And if we really needed 70 plus vaccines, right? Then why don't other countries have them as well? And I'm not talking about third world countries. I'm talking about countries that are equivalent to us. So, and Let's take the lid off it and really look at the data, really look at the the rates of, of kids who are being harmed by it. All this, I mean, really take a deep dive into it instead of just taking pharma and taking the word at it. That's all I was saying. So I don't want anybody to get that twisted. But I found this clip, and, and instead of a comment, I wanted to show because he sent this to me as a comment. I wanted to show this clip of RFK talking. So uh, we're going to watch this clip. Since 2005, I spent 30 minutes praying every day when I get out of bed. And my prayer is this. I asked God for 19 years to put me in a position where I could end the chronic disease epidemic and bring health back to our children. And in August, God sent me Donald Trump. Yeah, so I wasn't a, um, I wasn't a big RFK fan because I didn't really know who he was. I didn't really know what he was all about. I knew he was what we would call more liberal than conservative. But I saw him on the Joe Rogan podcast, and I listened to the whole thing. But this is some long podcast, by the way. Those are some long ones. And I listened to the whole thing, and I became a fan. Not over all of his policies, but when it came to health and wellness – and really challenging the status quo of the pharma industry and some of the things that were put out there. And this is only because of what I went through with COVID. Like I kind of got the, you know, I kind of got the veil t- taken away from before my eyes and I started to ask these things. I became a fan. I'm not a, I'm not an all out fan of his, but I think the team that Trump has put together with Tulsi, Elon, him, I really think it's to challenge the status quo. And I love what he was saying there. I, I really want our kids to be healthy again. In California, we have one of the highest, I believe it's the highest autism rate in, in, in the United States. Why? What's contributing to that? What's going on? I just have a lot of questions that I feel like we're not allowed to ask and nobody really wants to give answers. So anyway, that's my take on that. What'd you guys think of that clip? Oh, uh, when I first hear it, I don't believe him. Um, Man, I thought the same thing. What do you mean? <laughs> what, 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 hey, what do you mean? You, believe you wake up every day, and pray for thirty minutes. I was like, uh, Listen, so I, I, I had to get over that. Well, I, I don't think. Okay, when we say, "Hey, I've been praying about this every day," I think it's a rule of thumb that people are saying, "I'm praying about it most times than not." That's that's all I'm saying. I, I mean, I hear what you guys. I don't take it literally. Like every Monday. Or every you know every day of the week, six a.m. to six thirty, I'm praying this specific thing. But go ahead, yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm more like if you say it, you should believe. It. I mean, I if you don't, it, yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you think about he, what he's he asking seems like for? A great guy. He seems like a great guy. No, what do you think about the opportunity he's asking for? Yes, no, definitely. I mean, if he wants to do help our country get more healthier, I'm totally down with that. Um, I think there's some things that we can do that are realistic. We could do as a country, banning certain things and certain chemicals that we, we can get healthier. What do you think on that point? I Yeah, I would really like for somebody to um, push back on pharma. Um, I think that with... We have so, we have so much... I, I think our ability... We have a lot of ability to do more. Okay. Um, 
And I think that what he's talking about, from what I'm understanding him saying, is like fighting the chronic disease, okay. where it's like people are just making money off people remaining sick. Um, and, and really, like, are we really working towards people getting healthy, or are we working towards pe- for people just to continue to be on the bottle? And I think that's I think that's my that's my biggest question. That's my biggest dilemma. That's why I just encourage you guys. Have you either of you heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast? Yeah. No. Did you listen to the whole thing? Did you endure what was it? Two hours, and like twenty eight minutes or something? Did you endure the whole thing? I probably did. I don't remember. It. Okay. I just think a lot of things. And by the way, once again, I'm stay. I'm not saying they're all out to get us. I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying there needs to be full transparency. And they are not allowed to to be, they are not allowed to be covered, in the sense that they cannot be sued for harmful acts that are done. That's that's what happens. We like with the the whole COVID shot. What happened was we gave them a blank immunity check, so you could never sue them for what happens. And 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 yet they hit some things. They did some things that were disingenuous. That's all I'm saying. Nobody shouldn't be able to be held accountable. Matter of fact, I go on and and this I'll leave it alone. But J.D. Vance was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I talk about another marathon. It was three hours plus. It took me like three days to listen to all of it. Mm. But he brought up he brought up a story, and Joe Rogan fact checked him on the show. It's crazy. I almost clipped it for 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 you guys, but you guys can go back and watch it. It's about an hour and a half, two hours in. He said, "I have a friend who's a lobbyist," and I bumped into him. He said this was years ago. I, I I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going to say pre 2018 or something. Okay. And he goes, he looked, he looked, he looked super like depressed and like out of it. He goes, Hey, what's wrong? He goes, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit working for this company. He goes, bro, what? Like he kind of just kind of came out of was like, what's going on? He goes, this pharmaceutical maker uh, just found a way on how to make sure they never get sued and had something to do with, with native Americans that they were going to do a shell company through a native American group, blah, 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 give them some money. And because they do it this way, they can never get sued for what they're about to do. Mm. And Joe Rogan goes, you got to be kidding me. And he goes, Jamie, I think that's the guy who helps him. He goes, hey, fact check this. And it came up. It's 100% true. That's what I'm talking about. When we get to a point where profits are everything and then the government, it's like this. We pay these people to come up with the vaccine. Then they get to keep 100% of the profits. The system's rigged. If you're going to try to go find a vaccine, do it on your own dime, and then you could charge. If we pay you to find a cure and you find it, then it should be free for everybody. It should just be free. We'll, be, we'll basically pay you the cost to make it. If we funded it to do it, the, I'm just saying it's backwards. That, all, all I'm saying is I feel like we need people to challenge that process a little bit, to push back a little bit. It's like this. If, if, if you are a senator or if you are a congress member and you were on the board of, of Holly Burton or one of these war machines that we're always in war with and they're making all these new products to kill people and to do all this stuff, right? So we say, protect us. Okay, protect us, whatever. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just saying, then, you, then what? You're going to step off the board for six years and step back on? Well, that's a conflict of interest. Even though you're not on the board still, all your friends are. Hmm. And then you got the congress members who get rich while they're in congress, go into congress poor, and all of a sudden, they become stock genius traders. You know, I, I, you know I, I'm just, there's a lot to be questioned. And that's all I'm saying. We need people to disrupt the establishment. We need people to challenge. That's, the, that's how I became a fan. I don't know. You think I'm doing too much? Or do you think you, you kind of see where I'm coming from? No, there's definitely things that need to improve. So a lot of stuff he talks about, like food, our food quality and things like it's that. It's horrible. Yeah. And so I think it's it's hard for some people to, I mean, shoot, it's hard for me to always look at everything. Is this healthy? Is this good to get to my kids? It's like to have the government that actually, in some ways, they're able to help you. I think it still comes down to personal responsibility. But we should do our best as a nation to, to, to keep our nation healthy. What can we do to make sure that people, these big companies aren't just using us to keep us addicted to certain food and manipulating us to like never get full off certain food and you just keep going back to it, back to it or to stay sick so you can keep going to the doctor, not knowing what you're going to pay for medical bills. You go in to, you know, to get a surgery and you don't know what, it, what is this actually going to cost? Like it's up in the air and you come out and you're in, in just crazy debt and it's like truly understand these things. I think we can get, we can do better. Yeah. Any final thoughts on that? Yeah, I would love to see this actually uh, take place where you have a, an overhaul of big pharma. You have an overhaul, overhaul of like FDA um, to where we really get to see, you know, new standards. Why are the standards so low, right? You get to see new standards. You get to see 
um, maybe even you know, the price of prescriptions, all these different things just change. You, you hear stories all the time about people who need prescriptions and they can't afford it. Right. Um, and so all these different things where it's like, man, there's so, there's some kink in the line here. It just, it's not adding up. Why, why, why is it costing, you know, a thousand dollars for a bottle of pills for somebody who needs it in order to survive? Like that's just not making sense. And that's all I'm saying is, as I just want to see the disruption. Okay. So we're going to start a new segment called trending. Uh, we, we, cause I, I was thinking about this, so this, you know, uh, when the whole Diddy thing came out, it was trending. Uh, when the Robert Morris thing came out, it was trending. But believe it or not, uh, trending doesn't always go with people, but it can go towards animals. And I don't know if you guys know about Peanut. He's a squirrel that was taken in by a husband and wife. And uh, he, I don't know quite how everything went down, but I guess you're not allowed to have a squirrel as a pet. I mean, I can understand that, but it, it was not like any squirrel you had seen, but this squirrel has taken the nation by storm. And so Peanut is trending because somebody called on Peanut and they came and took the squirrel and the raccoon and they killed him. So well, they got a raccoon also. They had a raccoon. If you don't believe me, I'm going to show you this clip. This is from TMZ. Everybody's covered it. ABC, Fox. Everybody's covered about Peanut. I'm telling you, it's a big deal. And so even JD Vance <laughs> talks about Peanut. This is a big peanut. deal. Keep, it's keep a big, bro, it's I'm telling going. you, this keep is not, I, hey, I'm on the Peanut bandwagon. This squirrel was not ordinary. I'm just telling you that, okay? And it's sad that this happened, but I want you to show them this clip. This is from TMZ reporting on Peanut the Squirrel. We just learned that they have euthanized Peanut. And um, the raccoon as well. And the raccoon as well. Um, I, I, I am so sorry. I, I, this is, this must be really difficult for you. It not only tears my family apart, but Peanut was the cornerstone of our nonprofit animal rescue. And 10 to 12 DEC officers raided my house as if I was a drug dealer. I was sat outside my house for five hours. I had to get a police escort to my bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to feed my rescue horses breakfast or lunch. I was sit sat there like a criminal after they interrogated my wife to check out her immigration status, then proceeded to ask me if I had cameras in my house, then proceeded to go through every cabinet nook and cranny of my house for a squirrel and a raccoon. They got a search warrant? They got a search warrant. Four departments and a judge signed off on a search warrant for a squirrel and a raccoon. And then they took them and killed them. Why did they go through all that to get a search warrant for an animal that had been with you very safely and the world witnessed this for seven years? Why now suddenly did they show up with their search warrant and, and take these animals? We haven't a clue. We don't know who made the, com uh, the, the complaints. Again, Peanut was an uh, indoor squirrel not harming anybody. He's been with us for seven years. Not a single complaint was ever filed for this animal. We had him for seven and a half years. He became the world's most famous squirrel. We weren't hiding him by any means. He was all over TikTok. He became the first squirrel on TikTok to ever hit a million followers. He did every news station around the world. He's helped people. He's helped kids gather joy. And then we started a nonprofit animal rescue called Peanuts Freedom Farm to help animals like Peanut fight a good fight when they're in a neglected case or they're sitting in a slaughter auction. And he was the cornerstone of our life and our organization. We used his platform to help raise money for the 300 animals we have at our sanctuary. Yeah, I bet you guys did not know that was as big a deal. But did you hear how he got rated, though, for real? Like, that? does that seem excessive? I know, I'm not trying to throw shade on nobody, but I know people who have whole, like, pot forms in their house, and they don't get rated like this guy got rated over a squirrel. Did we have nothing better to do than to rate a guy? Did he say four agencies, 12 cops? Like, is there nothing better to, better to do? There's not like crime to fight. Where, where, did it say where this is at? Do we know? Do, do we know where that was at? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna find out. But, but don't you think that's a little excessive? I had to get a police escort to go pee. Like, I think that's a little much. What, what do you think? I mean, I know you're not a big squirrel fan, but do, I mean, you understand what he, he he used this to help other animals and rescue, which I think is noble. Just my own opinion. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand what they were doing. I mean, maybe I don't know. I gave from. Is it illegal to have a squirrel in your house? And the and what was other animal? The raccoon. A raccoon. Okay, raccoon. I mean, they could cause a little bit of problem, but I don't know that a squirrel could really. They're from New York. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I but is there not other problems going on in New York that you got to be worried about a squirrel? I'm just asking. I I don't know. It's. 
people around the world just looking at us going, shaking their head. Well, yeah. Dumb you, Americans. You took 12 people you, to go you, really catch a squirrel. No, you got but, people but you, with squirrels as pets, and they over here on TV oh, crying about it. I, I don't, I don't see a problem. First with First million I followers on TikTok. I don't think he's. I mean, I know he sat over a squirrel. It was his friend. I mean, it was it was his buddy. I think it's the bigger picture. He was using that. You know, there was a there was this relationship. He was using that to rescue other animals in danger. A horse. He, he was listing all those animals. This is this is you know we use this money. We parlayed it to use this money to help these. Uh, this is his heart is to help these animals who need rescue. My thing is, um, I look a little bit deeper. Like, number one, is it there other stuff he should be worried about in New York? I don't know, gangs, drugs. I don't know, illegal gambling, stuff like that. Just throwing that out there. Um, uh, you know, gangs killing people who people are here illegally. I mean, I could think of about a dozen other things you could be concerned about. Second, what's this wife immigration status got to do with anything? Is that not odd? Yeah, and it, the part I do feel bad about is what what they went through. So yeah. them raiding the house, them sitting outside, you know, for four hours. She's being interrogated about like, you know, are you legal? All these different things. Like, I feel bad for that part. Like. But I mean, I don't know. Like, are you supposed to have those animals inside your house? I don't know. Like, I don't. I, I mean, I but actually how, don't understand. Like, okay, having squirrel my, stuff. In, sure, you know? but my question is, how do you even know if it's in your house when they live in trees? He, he could have been living in the tree. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, they know. I know. I, I'm throwing that out there as yeah. tongue in cheek. But, but I, I'm just saying, with all the problems we got going on in the world, I agree with you. People are probably looking at us like, really, this is kind of goofy. But with all the, I'm saying it on the flip side. With all the problems we got going on. There's a reason why this is trending. People love their animals, which shout out to them, right? I'm not a big animal guy, but I don't shoot anybody down who is a big animal guy. My thing is the excessiveness. Like, what happens to just let people, leave people alone? But, I mean, there are agencies that do stuff like this. Like, you can't have okay. certain animals. You I, can't have certain pets. If you have a tiger, I get it. Yeah. Okay? If you have an alligator, I get it. If you have an elephant, I get it. If you have a, you know, if you, if you have a gorilla, I get it. A squirrel? Yeah, well, he's in New York. Don't live in New York. New York's a crappy place to live. Oh, Don't go there. Okay. If he was in Texas, he would have been fine. That there's he was in Florida, he probably would have been fine. That, this, he's got. You live point. in New York. Don't cry about it. Once when, when they come steal your squirrel. If the, if it was illegal. Well, what about the illegals that are illegal? It, uh, it's not illegal in New York. Oh, okay. There you go. The sanctuary right. state. All right. Well, I just thought there's a reason why it's trending. My heart goes out to homie and his girl. I, I, I feel bad for him. I'm just saying, was, like, people need clean water and stuff. We over here talking no, about. No, I, listen, I agree with that. the squirrel or whatever it is. There's a reason why it's trending, though. You got people who are saying, though, like, that's an infringement of rights. Like, that, that was a little excessive. To sit him outside for that long, to do all that, to immigration status. Like, there's stuff to deeper right there, I agree. Too. I agree that's all I'm that. saying. It was, it was a little much. Yeah, it goes back to Deshaun's comment. New York's a piece of crap. Oh, <laughs> I've never been. I can't say that. But, but the, from what I can see. Okay, it's, it looks like it's trash. It, it's I, I, it's probably seen better days. Yes, I, all I, the I officials would, seem trash. I, the people are not very nice. Boy, the, you're just going in. But is anything else you guys want to get off your chest hey, about New York? They got good pizza. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, you th you've been in New York. I think he's the only one who's been in New York. Oh, no, no, I, I know. I no, I've been in New York. Oh, I know they got good pizza. Oh, okay. Well, well New there, York style pizza. There, you there go. it is. New York okay. style pizzas. Trash. I got something. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> No one likes okay. New York style pizza. Like from New York, New York. Style pizza? Unless you're from New York, because you got to say that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we just started a whole other controversy. Okay. Oh. I got to show you something uh, sent again uh, by my homie Donald. He found this because he had asked me about it. I, I didn't hear about it. But I want to show you something about it was written about 120 years ago or so. And Ingersoll uh, was the last name of this guy who wrote a book. And it details. Sometimes, uh, sometimes things have a way of working themselves out, but I want, just watch this clip and let me get your take on it. They say art imitates life, but in this case, is art a prophecy? Author Ingersoll Lockwood wrote a series of books over a hundred years ago about a super rich kid named Baron Trump. One of the books is titled Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey. The fantasy book tells the tale of a boy named Baron Trump, who of course makes his home in Castle Trump. The narrator of the story is a guy by the name of Don. The book supposedly tells the tale of Don, the master of masters, taking young Baron through a time-traveling portal to Russia. The last pamphlet written by Lockwood is entitled The Last President, 
which takes place in New York City and describes the chaos America faces after the election of an unlikely candidate. That was it. That was it. So, no, no, go back to that screen. Watch this. Scroll over. It says, in 1893, Ingersoll Lockwood released a novel titled Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journeys. In the book, Baron is a boy who time travels. His adventures begin after he receives instructions from a character known as the Dawn to find a cave in Russia that contains a portal. Keep in mind that Baron Trump is the actual name of Donald Trump's son. The character's illustration looks uncannily similar to him. Lockwood releases another novel in 1896 called The Last President. In the book, Trump becomes president. He's not taken seriously, but still ends up winning somehow. He lives in a hotel on Fifth Avenue where the real Trump Tower is, and there's even a character named Pence. Okay, now, I, I, you can go to Amazon right now, and that's a collection of four books. So, what do you, do you guys, that's some serious sci-fi right there. I don't know. Is this, is this being manifested? Was somebody saying something? Is there a bigger picture at play or is this just all coincidental? What do you guys say? I think this is pretty strange. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have some people who are going to say, oh, they believe it because the last president. So there's been claims about that. We can't vote for Donald Trump because he's going to be the last president. This will be the last election. He's going to be a dictator. What do you think about this guy's book? Then you find that strange? I don't know. Maybe they're right then. Don't vote for Trump. No, no. What do you think about the book? It was written 100 plus years ago. I, I don't know. It's Coincidental. Coincidental. What do yeah. you what do you say? Yeah, I go coincidental, but man, pretty crazy coincidence. That's pretty. That's pretty. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but hey, you're. Hey, I'm starting to convert you. He's next. I'm starting to convert you. You're next. I'm telling you, man. This is you're a ticking time bomb over here. Before it happens, yep. Pretty soon we're gonna all come in with some foil hats on. No, it in the Bible. Right, whatever. It's all just make believe. Okay, okay. <laughs> you gotta admit, you can go to Amazon. That's pretty trippy, right there. Hey, leave it in the comment box. Are are you buying into this, or is there something else going on? Okay, let's talk about real quickly the message recap uh, from Sunday. I talked about momentum. I talked about seeds. Um, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on reaping where other people have sown, reaping where other people have sown. Have you seen that as a byproduct in your life? Or what's your thoughts about reaping where other people have done the hard work and have, have sown the, the labor? Um, do you have any personal experience with that or do you have any thoughts about that? I had a, um, I had a really cool conversation with uh, a friend of mine's mom yesterday at a birthday party and she was just sharing her experience of coming from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and it just so happened that my daughter's at the table at the time. And so she's an older lady who's telling the story about how when she grew up, like she didn't have a bed to sleep on. The first time she bought a bed was when she was 18. She didn't have a pillow. Um, and just going, you just, she kept going through her life until basically until now. And um, we're at this birthday party for her grandson who was turning one. And I was just thinking like, we we're talking about reaping where you didn't sow her grandson is going to have a life that was so completely different than what she grew up in. Um, and in her hard work of all the years of, you know, just one foot after another saying, you know, saying yes to God, even probably when she didn't even know she was saying yes to God. Uh, but laying a foundation that now her family has just changed generationally. And, you know, that's in the physical and the spiritual. It's, you know, the same way for some of us as well. But it was really cool. So that afterwards, I was able to ask my daughter, hey, did you hear that conversation? She was like, yeah. And I was like, you know, it's important that you have those conversations with people who have gone before you so that you understand, like, how good you have it and how you are basically in, you know, being able to be in the blessings of other people's hard work. Right. That's a great story. What about you? What do you, what do you think about that? You're reaping where other people have sown. Um, like, in terms of faith, I, I see, like, you know, my family – growing up in church and just the benefit I have from that and from them having faith and being good examples of, um, place my mom and dad and my grandma and grandpa, like living it out. Like they, I didn't see any difference from my church and at home. Like they really lived out their faith and that I had, how I had a great example that most people don't have the opportunity to have. Like who my parents were at church and who they were at home was no different whatsoever. And so I really get to, get to see that and get to see how to live that out and how to, how to live true in your faith. You know, I'm, I'm only smirking, not not at that. I, I love your story, love your family. But you had a moment on our Harvest Carnival where I saw a lot of your mom. And the reason I say that is because I, I can't remember what was going on. I think we were still doing setup. 
And I think somebody put on like Thriller or whatever. And when you came out to me, you're like, hey, what kind of music are we going to be playing tonight? And I was like, oh, man, it's cool. Like, I, I you know, I, you know me, I, I like a I like a plethora of music. But all I can remember, all I can remember is when um, at your wedding, you know, your mom would come up to me and ask me, like, we're going to keep it all Christian, you know, like, and I'm like, I'm cool with it. Mm. You know me, I'll, I'll do whatever. And but when you came up, I was like, he is his mother's son right here. He's no, like, that wasn't just me. That was Mike, too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we kept saying, hey, if we're going to say this is a Christian event, we got to be on the up and up. Right, this has got to be a Christian event. And, and you guys know me. I, you know I'm a. I, you, you guys know I got no dog in that hunt. You know, I, whatever. I, I'm I'm totally open to it all. But we're, I was just, we're a lot more modest when it comes. Yes, to you guys are. But I just thought it was funny because when you walked away, I go, "Man, that see that apple didn't mm-hmm. fall far from that tree whatsoever." And it's respectable. I love it because you're right. You are you are reaping from that generational blessing, right? Your whole family is. Mm. And so I just got the biggest kick out of that. I just started smirking to myself like, like that, that is literally reaping where other people have, you know, have, have kind of tilled up that ground and you're reaping somebody else's harvest. So I'm excited for your kids. I just want to know which one of your three kids going to be most like you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any of them will be like me. <laughs> <laughs> that youngest one ain't for sure, boy. Yeah. That's my favorite right there. I love that kid. They're more. They're. I mean, I don't want them to be like me. I mean, they're more fun than me. Okay. So they like to have more fun. They're smarter than me. So best part of that night, huh? We all dancing, and Deshaun. Ain't nobody working. We gotta get working. Hey, like, man, we, we, everyone wants to go home. But <laughs> hey, at the end of the night, people go leaving. <laughs> 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 they go from dancing to the end of the car. We still out here working. <laughs> I was up there dancing too. I was having a good time. No, this is good. I I, I love it. Um, I, I told the story this weekend about how our church was founded and we're redigging the wells that people have dug before us. So I just wanted to share that. I want to encourage all of you. Uh, believe it or not, um, I love what you. I love that story, Mike. We are reaping uh, where we have not sown, where our grandparents have sown. You know, I think of I think of a a lot of my mom's parents. Um, You know, my grandfather fought in the war. My grandmother worked in the cannery. And even when my grandfather came back, he used that GI bill to buy a house. And so really home ownership started then. And so he started changing a whole legacy. And not only that, but, you know, because he wasn't paid good wages, he had to work in the cannery, you know, seasonally. And so all this hard work to provide us a better future. And I even think of my own parents, you know, my father being in the military, my mother working in the office all these years, giving us opportunities that they weren't even um, allowed when they were kids. And so we are standing on the shoulders of very strong people. And so I think that's very important to always recognize that and realize that. But I do want to challenge all of us, like I said this weekend, um, what can we do? that have paved the way for generations to become. How can we pay it forward? And I think that's something we all need to be challenged with, right? What can I do that could set a new course, a new direction, right, for for my family's family, right, for my generations below me? Because think about, it doesn't just go back to your grandparents. It goes back to your great-grandparents who, for in my case, they came from Mexico, right? They came up here that, that their kids might have a better life. But what about their great-great-grandparents who probably fought in World War One, or they needed to make other decisions? And some of them were not easy decisions or the grandparents that had to live through the great depression the grandparents that had to live through the world wars the grandparents that had to live through you know the terrible you know what was that the black plague in the early or the spanish flu excuse me in the early 1900s all these people had to survive that that you might be here today Mm. that to me blows my mind that absolutely blows my mind to think about the obstacles of like my mom's mom and you know what she went through and all these things and foster and you know just it's why i'm here i wouldn't be here if if somebody long ago decided to give up to them giving up was not an option we keep moving forward in good times and bad times and we're all a byproduct of that right you got your own story you got your own story and i'm just grateful and so i want to challenge myself what can i do what decisions can i make how can I make a difference for my children's children? And we can go even one more down children that they could look back and said, yo, aunt, aunt made a decision, whether it's spiritual, financial, or even physically or emotionally, whatever, what decisions can we make? So what's going on fam? This is Anthony from the not offended podcast, the conservative Chicano right here. If y'all could do me a favor, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you could leave a comment, hit the like button, but most of all, if you could hit subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I want to, I want, I want to switch gears a little bit because we talk a lot about now about culture and its influence on the church. And I came across a clip from a pastor and I, you guys know me. I, I, I hear something 
and I say it sounds really good, but there's just like, but is it that simple though? Is, is that really what it is? And so I came across this clip and it's not that I really don't agree with it because I agree with it, but I just feel like something's missing. I feel like it's a cake uh, with frosting, but it doesn't have like the little drizzle of something. You know what I mean? Like caramel. It doesn't have a little drizzle of caramel or, or, or whipped topping or something, but I feel like it's almost there. I want to show you this clip because I almost feel like too, and I could be wrong. Y'all push back on me. I feel like there might be a little hint of like new ageyness in there or something, you know, like it's not all that like little positive thinking. Okay. So I'm gonna play this clip and, um, give me your feedback on this. Like these three things, if we just do these well for the long haul, like master these watch, you just rock it past most believers in life. Number one, intimacy with God It's the foundation, the fuel to all number two, die to self cross. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross. Number three, uh, the renewal of the mind. The, if you do all three, because then the renewal of the mind, if it's truly renewed, and, or at least ever going that way, the enemy starts losing real fast doorways to get in. That's his only way in, where mind's not renewed. And then, but I love that intimacy, intimacy with God fuels all. So you can't even die to self with first, without first loving God. You won't have the ability, you can't. You can't renew your mind without loving God. It's the foundation, it's the anchor of all. Because if you don't truly love God and you try and renew your mind, you don't even know the author of the book. And then you're like an Orthodox Jew. You, you know the scriptures, but you don't know he who is the scripture. So your mind doesn't get really renewed. Okay. What you guys? What'd you guys think of that? I, I think, you know, I, I actually looking at it right now, what I got triggered at is the ultimate fuel for the Christian success. I, I think that's what I got triggered at because I'm thinking success is such a, it's a word where it's, it's, everybody's just got a different definition of success. Well, they call that subjective. It, it is very subjective, right? It's like, it's like your definition of success and mine might be worlds apart. Right? So I think that's where I got triggered at. Cause I just heard this again. This is like the third time. And I'm like, Hey, actually everything you said was pretty dang good. I think I'm just more triggered by the title. I don't know. Go ahead. You got that look at me like, yeah, you tripping on that one. Yeah, no, I think it was solid. I mean, <laughs> You always gonna hear these. Sermons. These are the three things you have to do. Like you know, it's oh. more than three things. It's probably like, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably like three things. A bunch of pastors preach. I add up to a hundred things you could do, and they're right. all right. Um, that uh, that will lead to success. I thought it was solid out. though. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is that the success is one to be intimate with God, get to know Him, die to yourself. Okay, so that means you might be broke first. Like whatever God leads you, or you might be rich. You don't know where else going to lead. It's like you just die into yourself. Yeah. And so, and then renewing your mind, like you're the way you think, the way you think changes from what the way you think to the way God thinks. Yeah. And so, uh, I think all of that's not pointing at you, but it's pointing back to God. So. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with what he said there. Like I said, I, you're right on the three things. There's yeah. always three things yeah. add up to a hundred. And I think once again, the subjective word of success, I think that's why I got a little like triggered on, go ahead. What were you going to say? Or maybe it was the music in the background. Maybe it was, you know, so they always got to put a pad behind yeah, that. Right? Yeah, it's dramatic go. effect. Uh, I, yeah, I, it, obviously we always see just a, a, as a, a clip, snippet, yeah. right? So it's hard to also l look at him like, well, what's the, what's the totality of what he's talking about? But in, in what we were given, I liked it. Um, I thought that he, his reference to the Orthodox Jew and, and knowing the scriptures, but not knowing God, uh, is, the author of scripture you know, yeah. is, um, is something that as pastors, I think that we, we run into even with people who attend church. Um, yet there's no breakthrough in their life, and, but they're like, well, you know, or they'll try to like, you, there's always those certain select people that really want to try to like grill you about scripture, but like <laughs> everything in their life screams that they don't obey scripture. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Um, Facts. Yeah. I'm going to so, argue with you about scripture. Well, could you at least walk out? Scripture? How, about, how about we just start with you living out one of those? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fine. I'm wrong. Go ahead. Go <laughs> no, ahead. That's so true. Uh, so anyway, yeah, for what we were, what we were given, I liked it. Well, let me, let me ask you guys a little bit more, a, a deeper question. Why do people get triggered? What do you, I, 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 like I'm sitting here thinking about like, what was really your issue? And for me, you know, I, I don't know. And you guys are looking on the outside in. I think I just got triggered at the subjective word of success. Right. And then the, like you said, the three things. And I think I get triggered at that because it's not that simple. You know, we try to, it, it's, it's our packaging. Well, if you just do this, this, and this, this is your outcome. And I've been serving the Lord way too long to realize that's not your outcome all the time. 
your outcome is going to differ from my outcome. It's not a recipe, right? It's, it's not like if we follow the same Joanna Gaines chocolate chip cookie recipe, all the cookies are going to come out the same. It's, it's, that's not how Christianity works. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's why I get triggered. But why do other people get triggered by other things? What do you guys say? Like, like what has ever triggered you or what do you think that comes from? What triggers me or yeah, what? Just, just people getting triggered in general. Why do you think people get triggered? Um, this maybe their experiences. Okay. You know what they experience. I know like what's funny, listen to Rogan and sometimes I have to skip through stuff because he um he'll talk about faith or things like that. But he had talked about which I agreed on but I still skipped through it, was like, you know, the the televangelists, you know, and how they're they go and they, you know, just want to take your money. And he was like, Man, it's one of the biggest scams in America. Like these dudes get to come after you, you know, and be have the tax exemption and come after you for this money and just like and that could trigger me as a believer if I hear anyone talk about, you know, about money or you being successful or God wants to bless you. Cause I'm thinking, man, you're giving us a bad rap. But it's okay, I think, at times to preach that God does want to bless you. Right. Now, now we don't know what that's going to look like. Okay, it might not be it might not be money. It might be actually health. It may be like you know, um, a relationship is restored, things like that. It doesn't always look the way you think it should look. Okay, why do you think people get triggered? I like yeah. this word experiences. Yeah, experience. no, I, I as he was saying that, I was like, uh, he and I were look. We were talking last week because you had asked me to look something up. Uh, this organization that we might partner with, and. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm on this website for like two minutes and I'm already like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> and, and we were started laughing and I was like, um, but I think a sign of, of spiritual maturity is you're able to like push past that. And I'm not saying I did, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the word was. It was, that it was urban. Oh, what would it just, that triggers you? I, dude, when, when specifically white people, when, when they, when they use, <laughs> When they use urban as like a way to You feel like that's a code word for some? Color people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do you prefer they just come out and say it? Yeah, I was like We trying to reach the black and brown folk down here, okay? So right, we gonna call put, it urban? Yes, you put urban and then you get like a bunch of faces that are, that, <laughs> that look like they're kids from Ethiopia, right? Uh I, I just like, man. I don't know. For but me, is that does that come from your experience of living in Portland though? Is that so okay. but but when Deshaun was talking about experiences, I think it's it's so true. Based on your experiences, when you see something, um, you know, maybe it's like a church that you walk into walk walk into for the first time and or you start attending for a while and the pastor says something a certain way and it triggers you from a previous experience mm. at a different church and all of a sudden you want to check out or um, like, like, let's take my example for, uh, my, my example, like I'm on this website looking at this organization and it very well could be like a super solid organization. Gotcha. Like, um, and I'm not even saying like what they were doing was wrong by any means, but my experience and the filter that I was looking through has me already checked out. And so that's why I went to him and was like, man, dude, I'm, I'm looking at this all bad, you know, like this word for some reason triggers me. And I think I had said it out loud to him because I was trying to move past it. Gotcha. No, I, okay. So I, I think, by the way, I think all those answers are good. I think a lot of it does have to do with experience or what we've been told, right? Or mm -hmm. what we've been told. So uh, there was a couple in Fowler that's right outside of Fresno where we live that made the headlines because apparently they went to a Niner game and the security guard was a little triggered at one of the hats that somebody was wearing. And uh, just watch this clip, and let's, let's we're going to go frame by frame here. Let's we're going to watch this one. Let's let's see what's going on. Aileen Espinoso says her husband was wearing a Make America Great Again hat that you see right here. She says they were stopped by security even after scanning their tickets and going through security checkpoints. She says they were told he had to throw away the hat or leave the stadium. About to enter, and they stop us because my son-in-law is wearing this hat. And they don't want to let us in. She can't wear it? Yeah, they said we can't wear it. No way. Yes. Yes. Around the house. Let's go. Woo! Let's go, Trump. Woo! He's going to allow you guys in. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Uh-huh. Figure. Go figure. 
Several people stop and exchange words with security as it was happening and as you saw, a supervisor finally arrived and let them in. Now, the 49ers communication team tells Fox 26 it will not be commenting on the incident. However, Fox 26 learned the policy does not prohibit MAGA hats at the stadium. Wow. <laughs> Shout out to that family in Fowler. Oh, wow. The Niners National News the and everything. Niner security lets in uh, half of the Norteño gang members, <laughs> uh, but not the guy with the Maga hat. All right. What, what, what do you think that was all about? Why does that hat trigger some people? I mean, people don't like Trump. But yeah, people don't like Trump. That's it. Yeah. Just that simple. I mean, it, or it could, it could be that they didn't want, they didn't want violence in a stadium because it triggers other people. Oh, okay. I see what you're I saying. Mean, it, like, I could truly see someone saying like, hey, we don't want any of those hats in here because it's going to be a fight. Well, you good. can't let cowboy hats in there. <laughs> true. <Hey. laughs> that one's probably truer than yours. Yep. That's yeah. probably true. But I, I don't understand. Let me ask you this. I've yet to see a video where someone has a Harris Waltz hat on. Because no one is wearing them. Oh, is that what it is? No, sorry. But but but, but I'm saying we're 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 you know Trump Trumpians or whatever you want to call them are getting that hysterical and that violent. I haven't seen anything like that, but but I listen, here's what I don't get. Um, I don't care what hat people are wearing. Do you care what hat people are wearing? I, I, I just don't, I don't understand. Help me to, is it, can you help me to understand? I don't understand why people get so upset. You want to wear a hat? Wear a hat? I don't freaking care. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, you can't go around policing people's shirts and hats. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, there's places in this country doing naked parades. Can we at least get them to cover up with that hat? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, this is what I don't, I don't, do you understand where I'm coming from? I don't understand why people get triggered. Help me. Or is there nothing you can do for me? I'm on my own. I think that's just kind of like the state of our country. The, the people are so um, polarized and they're, it's such a, um, the, the, divisive the, yeah it's such a divisive culture right now to where they just can't people don't want to coexist okay i'm just going to say something because i'm arguing with myself real quick when obama was running the first time i can't begin to tell you how many people wear their obama shirts to church so proud that there was going to be the the nation's first black president mm. people were so proud and he, i had the same stance then i don't care what shirt you wear i really don't are you coming to hear a word from the Lord? Are you coming to be transformed by the power of God? Are you coming to experience Jesus? I, I, I just, I just, I didn't care. So I don't care if they wear a MAGA hat or they don't wear a MAGA hat. I don't care if they have a MAGA flag on their trunk or a, or a Niner flag on their, on their truck. I, I just, I, I don't know. Is that just me? But I see these other people losing their minds, like, like literally losing their minds. And do you guys just think this is the state of where we're at? We're just that divided. I don't know that we're ever coming back then. I think people are also really um, afraid of what the outcome is going to be of the election. Okay. I talked about that this weekend too. I said, hey, no matter what, you get a do-over in four years. If you don't like what you but got. I, don't, I think some people feel like you may not. Well, I said in the last service today, well, then we'll usher in the apocalypse and we're out of here as the church anyway. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm just, I just refuse to lose my mind over it. Well, that's the thing. The whole thing with the squirrel. People like to get together and get mad about stuff. That's why stuff trends so much. Not I want to okay. choose a side and I want to get on social media. I don't get mad. I want to yell at someone. And it, that's something else people love to do. Okay, but can we get mad at, at real things? Like, okay, if there was cheating in the election, can we get mad at that? Let's get mad at that. No, but then you have to choose a side. Yeah, some people get mad no, about I don't, it. No, I don't care if we're cho cheating on one side or the other. Cheating's cheating on any side. I don't care. No, but that's not how it works. You choose a side and you get mad at the other side. Oh, okay. That, okay, well, I don't I, I don't play that game. <laughs> well, that's how people play it. No, I, I get it, but I don't play that game. So <laughs> shout out to that couple standing their ground. And I think the Niner organization has some stuff to clean up because that was going to be a lawsuit. Nah. No, they can't, no, no. They, they're in San Francisco. They can't be standing with MAGA. No. No, I'm saying I think they had to clean that up with the couple. That's a lawsuit. You can't harass people like that. In San Francisco, they look good. They're like, way to fight. But that's not San Francisco. That's Santa Clara. Oh, yeah. They're all still probably liberal. But no, I'm, t I'm telling you, that, that you don't want that smoke. As a, as a football team, you don't want that smoke. I'm telling you. That, that's, I'm telling you. That's why they said no comment. I, I've been around lawsuits long enough to know if they ain't making a comment, there's some lawyer who's getting a million dollars an hour going, shut your mouth. That's what's no, happening. I, I agree, but they like what they did. 
Who likes what they? Oh, secretly Savannah's. they're, they're high fiving yeah. each other yeah. in the background organization. Yeah, well, you know, what I, now look at Bosa. Bosa came out with his MAGA hat on. Yeah, and they're telling him to shut up now too. Sure. No, nope. number one selling jersey. He's too big for them to no, shut up. I'm saying they're saying it. He ain't shutting up. He doubled down. Hey, they're, oh, as a Raider fan, kick Bosa out of San Fran. I'll take him. I don't even care. I know I win sports real quick. Yep, kick him out. Yep, he he can be he can be a MAGA fan all he wants in 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 in, in silver and black in Vegas. Taxes are better. They support Trump over there. Come on down. On the other side of Max Crosby. Ooh. Nasty boy. Nasty. I'll take it right now. Yeah, take I mean, I mean, that's why Steph Curry's trans now because of the way he he's in San Francisco. Yeah, he he Hey, what did you say? <laughs> nah, that, that hey, say. matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, uh, I saw other I saw other I saw other Christian podcasts. I, I didn't let that slide. I saw other Christian podcasts going after Steph Curry now. Oh really? Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen it. I mean, I know we have. Okay, I got another one. I got another one. Um, I I think you remember this guy after I played the clip, but uh, I think it's Fa- Father Charles. He's very popular in the UK. He came over to a Turning Point event and he gave a little speech. Uh, and oh my gosh, people got so triggered. And I'm gonna show you the speech in its entirety. It's like two minutes, and it's like he didn't say anything that I think people were gonna lose. Their their marbles over, but apparently this just was like one of the trending tweets, and like people were just going to town. So I want you to watch this. Please welcome the host of Common Sense Crusade, Father Calvin Robinson. Thank you. Um, I must start off with an apology. I, I hail from England. This is how I speak. I hope you can still understand me. But I come in love with a warning. My beautiful nation, your motherland, has fallen. England is no longer part of Christendom. It is a beautiful shell, reminiscent of a time when people believed in Christ and they built monuments in memorial of Christ where architects may build something that they would never see the fruit of, but they built it because it was for the greater glory of God. Unfortunately, those buildings are empty. The average attendance of a church in the United Kingdom is 25 People have stopped going to church and they've stopped praying. And as a result, the Marxists have taken over. The average English family has a birth rate of 1.4. Mother and father are no longer replacing each other. At the same time, we have mass illegal and legal immigration, which means that the Mohammedans are upbreeding us 10 to 1. For the first time in my nation's history, Christianity is no longer the predominant faith. Probably in my lifetime, Islam will be the predominant faith of the United Kingdom. So I come here to warn you, don't do what we did. Keep up the prayer, keep the the churches full, keep the Marxists away. Just this month alone, in fact, just this weekend, my friend was arrested for releasing a documentary. But just this month, I've had a friend arrested, charged, and found guilty of silent prayer in their own heads. So we've gone past the point of these Marxists policing policing our language and policing our tone to them policing our thoughts. We have these buffer zones around abortion centers where the police come up to you and say, are you praying for the lives of unborn children? And if you say yes, you get arrested. Because the Marxists appreciate the power of prayer. They appreciate that our God is a true and living God and wants to help the vulnerable and does not want us killing our offspring. But the Marxists want that to be the case. And so my message to you guys is keep the Marxists away. We took Christ out of our schools. We took Christ out of our judiciary. We took Christ out of our public life. Don't do the same. I thank God that you guys have your First Amendment that protects you and your Second Amendment to back that up. But, But not all of your politicians believe in those amendments. The Marxists want to erode your constitution because they forget that your, your rights do not come from government. Your rights come from God. And, and we need to put Jesus Christ back at the head of everything, including the state. And to that I say, Jesus Christ may not be on the ballot box, but the Jezebel is. So you know what to do. God bless. Please welcome the co-founder and president of the Daystar Television Network, He is not. He is not scared of controversy. So, do you, okay, what do what 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 do you think was the trending thing that got him in the most trouble? That that made him that got people triggered. 
uh, either his uh, his. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, Mohammedans or yeah, uh, Mohammedans. Mm -hmm. Either that or the Jezebel comment at the end. Okay, what'd you think? Which one? It should be the Jezebel. Uh -huh. But I don't know. So it, it it actually was a little bit of a toss up, but they didn't like how he had talked about the um, Second Amendment backing up the First Amendment. Uh -huh. it goes back to the whole gun control, and they they felt like that was a that was a shot to you know. To the to those who oppose it, like you're never getting rid of our guns because if you get rid of our guns, then you'll try to come take us over. So it, it I, I don't know I I don't I don't quite understand always the argument with people trying to you know reduce gun control or whatever. I, I so I don't really understand it. But but that one I think the Jezebel. The only reason why I don't think that one was the to us as believers. The same. The people don't know what he's saying. Exactly. To us as believers, right? We kind of get that. We understand that. That was a total dig. But to everybody else, they're like, well, who's that? Who cares, right? So I think that's why, but but they didn't they didn't like that smug remark, that smirk, you know, about, well, don't get rid of your first, you know, amendment. And that's why you got the second one to back that up. They kind of felt like that was a, that was like a, a whistle, you know, what they call that, like a dog whistle, like an undercover subliminal message, like, hey, never let go of your guns, no matter what happens. Anyway, but um, people were triggered. People were just losing their mind. But- let me ask you this. Do you feel like there was any truth in what he was saying? Yeah, I think it was truth in everything he said. Okay. I didn't see an issue with anything he said. Did maybe, you, maybe there was something, but I, I didn't see it. Didn't okay. What would you think about that? Well, I mean, he's speaking from what what's Experience. actually happening. Yeah. So I think that it's all true um, in the sense of if it's happening in England, why would it not happen here? It comes west. That's That's for sure. If you look at the trends in the church, we talk about culture and its influence on the church, right? Um, it comes West. The whole deconstruction came West. The whole progressive movement, you know, comes this way West. It, is, it doesn't start here and go backwards. It starts over in Western Europe, in the UK, and it always ends up this way for the most part. And so I, I do think there was a lot of truth in what he said. I also feel like um, as believers, if we can go in that direction, I feel like this is a, a wake up moment for us. Like God sent him here to talk to us. Um, you guys know me. I don't know about the whole Jezebel thing. I, whatever. Scratch that. Um, I think he was sent here to say, hey, listen, I'm talking about how things are going to go if you guys don't wake up over here. And I feel like that's something we need to heed. I also go back to what I said, too, is we need to check out both candidates policies and both. And, and I would even go one step further. What, what teams are they assembling? What teams of people are they bringing around? And then what do these team of people believe? What does this group of individuals believe? I think we need to look a little bit further as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that was good. But boy, did people, people got up in arms uh, uh, about that. Yeah. But I, and I, th I think we do, we do have to be careful. It's hard because you have the Muslim faith who do organize to try to take over. They do. And then us as Christians, we want to allow freedom, which is, I mean, the right, right thing to do. We don't want to force anything on anyone. But you have to realize at some point that something's going to be forced upon you. So we have to do something to fight back. And you have to be, we think we have to be at least aware of that. Yes. That they want to come and they want to take over. They don't want to come and coexist. It's like, no, I want to force my views upon you. Right. Right. I, I agree with that. So um, as, you, as, as we all know, uh, Tuesday is coming. Tuesday is the election day. And there are going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of people on either side who are going to be very upset with the outcome. And they're going to be triggered and there's going to be a lot of families in turmoil. There's going to be a lot of friends in turmoil. There's going to be a lot of triggered people out there, especially if they feel like the results aren't fair. People were cheating. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of stuff happening. And um, we as people of faith, we need to help people recalibrate, keep the main thing, the main thing. And we really need to help people in these times not to be triggered, not to not to lose their stuff. And I want to play a clip because he's the only person. And by the way, I have no problem admitting that I'm a fan of this person. I, I, I've listened to that whole podcast. I became a fan. I'm not sold on him, but I'm a fan. I, I'd listen to more of what needs to be said. But what he's about to say in this clip, um, my gosh, I couldn't agree more with. And so I want to play this clip, and hopefully this is going to help somebody in the upcoming days that, hey, it's all going to be all right. Okay, so watch this clip. Is it Theo Vaughn? No. No. Oh. <laughs> 
This has to be the best advice that I've heard any politician give. Don't get too personal all the time, but you know, one of the things I've seen, especially from you know some of my wife's friends and some of my friends, is that they disagree with us on politics sometimes. They'll get very personal about it. And if you're discarding a lifelong friendship because somebody votes for the other team, then you've made a terrible, terrible mistake and you should do something different. Whether you vote for me, whether you vote for Kamala Harris, don't cast aside family members and lifelong friendships. Politics is not worth it. And I I think we follow that principle we'll hold the divide in this country facts 100 percent facts right there i couldn't agree more um i think that's what's missing i'm not going to disown family members i'm not going to get rid of friends i'm not going to do anything if you vote different you vote different that's that's just that simple it's just that simple life life is so much more than this um i think i haven't heard any other candidate say that. have you heard any other candidate say that i haven't heard any other candidate say that including trump no and so you know what that right there is facts what do you think about that yeah no i think it's good i mean the stuff i you know think about you you know if you really want to like you know tweet something text something you know type it out then delete it and move on like don't don't say it like there's no reason to i said my best i try to honor god in everything that i do and um it's so when i think about that like okay i try to honor my mom and I try to honor the church. Yeah. And so it's like anything I say or I do, you know, in the, in the way to honor God, I think of those two, the church, and I think of my mom until so like, okay, this is how I could do my best to honor him. So in terms of my family, it's like I'm honoring my mom. Like she wants us all to get along and love each other. So it's like, is this going to do that? Boy, isn't that just great advice right there mm-hmm. for uh, people who are, that was well worth the price of this show right here. This is the Not Offended Podcast. We could just walk, my, we know, we can walk off with that advice. Think about honoring, yeah, I, bro, I couldn't agree more, but, I, but what upsets me is no other politician says that. It's like, but this is so true. That will heal the divide mm-hmm. if we can just get along. You can argue about policy. I agree. My gosh, we've been the byproduct of some bad policies for four years. But don't make it personal. Oh, you idiot. This is, you know, this is where you voted. No, nah, don't make it personal. This person's policy just sucks. Anyway, what would you think of that clip? Yeah, you know, um, as pastors, we see that death is a great unifier. Um, and you, know, you go to a funeral, it's like nobody's talking about, you know, who they voted for at a funeral. That's true. Um, but unfortunately, it takes somebody to die for people to kind of come together and say, hey, you know, this is family is what's really important. We, we really need to kind of move together and, and, and to love one another. And so instead of waiting till somebody dies in order to, for you to love somebody who you may not see eye to eye with, just move past it. It's okay. It's okay to not agree on policies that sometimes won't even affect you, policies that will change in four years, people who are asking for your vote who un- most likely don't really care about you. They just care about your vote. And so you're going to discard a relationship with somebody who actually does love you, who you probably do love, for a vote to give it to somebody who could care less about you. Let me ask you guys a question. How and why do people get to that point where they feel that's necessary? I mean, that's the ultimate case of tribalism. Wouldn't you agree? If you do not agree with what this tribe believes, you're out of the tribe. Like I, to me, that. but how do we get there? What happens that we get to a place, we'll let go of family members and relationships that we've had for years. How do we, how do we end up there? I think that people play on, politicians play on fears. Right. Like, so, so if you think about like, what, are, what are the things that you love the most? Um, you know, then they'll play off of that fear and think about all the, like the different commercials. Oh, I just walked past the Fresno B, uh, you know, um, headline yesterday, Saturday, not yesterday, Saturday. Uh, and, and it said farmers fear if Trump wins, he'll get rid of all the workers. Really? Front page. So then, but what does Headlines. that mean if you're a farmer, right? That means that you lose, lose your livelihood. You lose everything that, that Okay, you, that but you, what else is that saying? What you're saying is every person who works in the field is illegal. That's what you're saying. I don't know that every person who works in the field is illegal. I mean, it's such a broad, it's such a broad, catchy, shock value. All farmers fear. Dun, 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 dun. Trump presidency. Gone is your broccoli. Lost are the carrots. Grapes still on the vines. You know, you know, does that make sense? Like, really? That dramatic? That's what we're going to do. We've got nothing else to do. And it, all it does is sow more divisiveness. It just sows more of a divide. But, but why, why, why do you think people get to that point of like, I'm going to ditch everybody because of what this po- – really, what a politician says, for real. Because you have – people have certain values they hold on strong to. So 
um, if you're a Republican, you, you hate people of color. You hate immigrants. If you're a Democrat, um, you hate life. So you want to just, you're all for abortions until the baby's born. That's just you, black and white. That's what you're going to get. And so you put if you hold this value of like, no, I'm against abortion or you you hold this position that no, we should allow people in. If the other side you hate because that's the thing that you hold on to the most and automatically you believe that about that person. And so it automatically divides each other because that's the values that you have. And that person hates your values. And so therefore, if that person doesn't like that policy, then you must not like that person. They take that personal. They take it, per- it might not even be true. Just because you're Republican doesn't mean that you hate all people of color. It, that doesn't mean that. Hmm. You still could be for people coming in, but you're like, I think there should be a process. Is it because we're not taking the time to really just hear each other out? Yeah. Or if you're a Republican, you're not saying that, hey, if a, if the, the, the mom is going to die, like, man, we got to look at all options and see what we can do. Like, what's going on here? You, but you, but automatically you have you, you have this divide immediately. Like, hmm. nope, you don't care about women of color because they're the ones dying from um, from having birth all the time. They're the one dying the most. You hate them, and you don't care. You like no, the doctor can't have can't do any surgeries to save their life. That's the, your automatic view, and so it just divides people because that's what they what should get labeled immediately. Yeah. What What do you think about that? You, you think people are just so they'll die on that mountain for that specific platform belief instead of just really having a conversation and say, "Hey, we could, man, we can agree to disagree, but we still gonna be friends." Yeah, people get played. That's all it is. People are getting played by these politicians. They 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 over you know they they overcommit to something that they can't even follow through on. Most of the time, these politicians get in office saying that they're going to do something, they don't end, even end up doing it. <laughs> so true, uh, so true. You know, because and a lot of times they can't. There there's too many different steps in order for them to right. have to too many do, checks and balances. Yeah, you just, you can say that you want to do this, but you you can't end up doing it, or you don't end up doing it. So anyway. But I think, what, like I was saying earlier, like politicians play off the fears of, of people, and your fears are what gets you to dr- gets you to drives you to do things that you wish you wouldn't have done, and to think a certain way. And so all of a sudden, it's like it's it's this me versus you, us versus them. I, we can't be friends because if you vote a certain way and it's not the way that we vote, um, that means it's going to be like you know death to my family. <laughs> So, so but extreme. people will really, yeah. they'll really believe that yeah, because so some of these politicians are really saying like, if you vote for the other side, this is what everybody that you, that you love is going to be deported. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. Let's close this way. Uh, you know, we talk culture influence on the church. We want to, we want to help people spiritually. We want to really help them to, you know, to kind of just carry on to, to really just get up, move forward and, you know, take on another day. So let's say it's Wednesday, November 6th. And your side uh, has lost. Uh, your side has uh, not won the presidency. What advice, what advice would you give to that person? What good godly advice would you give to that person who's feeling down and out, who probably took this a little too serious and is now just, that's it, the world's coming to an end. You know, they're just, they're, they're really having a hard time with the outcome of this election. What advice would you give them? Bishop, we're going to start with you on this one. Because we always start with the token, and, and I feel like sometimes I put them on the spot a little too much. So we're going to do this, but what advice would you give to that person? And then we're going to go you, and then uh, I'll close this out. Let's go. Um, everything's going to be all right. You're going to be okay. It doesn't matter who wins um, who who wins on Tuesday. Like You're going to be okay. You, are you still, are you, you have to choose, are you still following Christ? Do you still believe that he'll take care of you? I mean, that's what scripture says. He's going to take care of you no matter what. Who are you looking to be your provider? Who are you looking to be your savior? It ain't going to be the president of the United States. Um, and so look towards him and have people around you who, who feel that same way and encourage each other to keep going on in the faith. It doesn't matter if the country goes to crap. You still go trust, trust God. It doesn't matter if we, you know, if America turns around and we're in abundance. I mean, that's, that's another danger for people, too. Oh, yeah. you, you easily forget about God. And so no matter what goes on, trust him and keep following him. What you got? What you got, Token? What you got for us? Yeah, I think for the for the believer out there is uh, if you, you feel that stress, you, you feel the strain, pray. Just pray. Um, I know that seems kind of a, a simplified answer, but, um, you know, CNN's not going to give you the answer that you're looking for. Fox News is not going to give you the answer that you're looking for. Your friend, your neighbor, your coworker, 
um, because that was that vexation, the whatever that is that's that's deep inside of you that that got you feeling unsettled, uh, can only be found in your relationship with the Lord, and you need a word from Him if if you're feeling like that. So go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, thank you. That was both of you. That was really good. Uh, I say make a choice, and here's what I mean by that. I know no matter what happens, I'm going to make a choice to love people, to see the best in people. And if I can't change the outcome of any election, I could change the outcome of my own behavior. I could change the outcome of my own mindset. I could change the things with inside me. I could choose to be a better believer. I could choose to follow Jesus in a deeper and more meaningful relationship. I could choose to still be the salt and the light. Uh, in, in a community, I can make all these choices on my own. And here's the biggest one that I want to make a choice on. I can still choose to have people who I don't see eye to eye with, but I choose to walk hand in hand with. I can still choose my relationships and still choose to love the people, even though they, they vote different or think different because I do not need to see eye to eye to walk hand in hand with somebody. I only need to know their heart and, and how they passionately pursue Jesus. And that's what I want to link up with. So I want to link up with other believers to help me be salt and light to a world that sooner or later is going to come to a point and to realize that Jesus is truly the hope of the world. This has been the Not Offended Podcast. Peace, we're out. What's going on, fam? This is Anthony from the Not Offended Podcast, the conservative Chicano right here. If y'all could do me a favor, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you could leave a comment, hit the like button, but most of all, if you could hit subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much.